Yeah, that's my just gas faces of what when I watched um, Game of Thrones season six finale. Yeah, I just geek gasmed there. Yeah, like what? Yeah, yeah. What up, guys? It's me, not so funny comedian. Yeah, and welcome to Game of Thrones. Season six finale review. Yeah, and I got my game phones t shirt on. If I, yeah, yeah, if you can see. Yeah, I got my game phones t shirt on. Yeah. Hello to his house, motherfuckers. Hey, literally I'm a game phones fan now. Literally, I've been game phones fan since Yeah. Since season four. And now I've seen all six seasons now. I've been graced by the charms. Yeah, welcome to my review of Winds of Winter. Oh, um, mother fucking G. Boy, yeah. Um, yeah, directed by, um, Megan Spurman and written by, um, the creators, the executive producers, David Benworth and Debron Wells. Yes. Oh, yeah. 69 minutes of freaking awesomeness. O M G yes. O M G seriously, I was yeah. Many characters literally, literally cut off many of the cast members. This at the end of this season, and literally, and I was what? Say what? Say what? Yeah, like that. And O M G like that. And yeah, I was. Gobsmacked, literally, I was gobsmacked of the episode. I was shocked at the beginning, <laughs> amazed at the end. Yeah, Daenerys Targaryen is going to Westeros with a lot of with a big, big, massive army. So, uh, and yeah, Cersei is the freaking queen now. Yes. Oh yeah, and. The vision was true. Brennan Stark's vision of um, King's Landing um, bit was true. Literally, of the vision. And yeah, OMG it was. And Jon Snow is actually a Stark. Yes, uh, yeah, it's finally revealed that... Um, yeah, it was a memorable moment at the end of the episode. Yeah, uh, of course. And that bit as well with um, that's the flashback scene. I was so gobsmacked. Like that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was amazeballs. And just loved it. Literally. I really did. Literally. Um, the memorable moment, which was the beginning of the episode as well, and I really, really enjoyed that. And yeah, I will reveal the deaths. Literally, I was shocked. Tobin, um, Tobin, um, suicides himself because he was fucking fed up with his mother doing that, all that shit, isn't it? Um, literally, half of the characters died in the explosion. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the shame. It was just what? Yeah, I was just what? Like what? Like, what? It was freaking awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. It was amazing, freaking brilliant. And yeah, so deaths. Yes, the deaths. Grandmaster, person, brother Lannister, the High Sparrow, Lord, Lord Tyrion, Queen Meridian Tyrion, Lord Mason Tyrion. Sir Kevin Lannister, Kin Turnburn Braverin, Sir Radlin Rivers, Love and Frey, Lord Weldon Frey, and Lennon Stark flashback. And literally, it was just a freaking amaze balls and just awesome as well. And I really, really enjoyed it. And this was actually this the title of this episode was the unpublished sixth novel. So yeah, this was the longest episode, and but yeah, I don't care. I didn't care. This was the brilliant 
Fantastic finale. My favourite episodes now are the Battle of the Bastards, Winds of Winter and the Door and Door. Literally, I was just a lot. But yeah, I freaking loved it. I freaking Jesus has loved it. It's gotta be the longest um longest ever. Review I have ever done, and literally, this has been the best episode yet so far. Well, the but but about the bastards, and this one has been freaking awesome. I love you, right? I will, and then I will do a thank you speech at the end of the episode. I'm gonna cry. So, here's the synopsis of the episode. So, yeah. So, I'm going to sit up there and do the freaking awesome episode, so, um, the review. And yeah, let's do this kind of put it there. Hello guys, yes, and now is my review. So, reading the synopsis and giving my rating to, yeah, got my Game of Thrones t-shirt. Boom! Doctor Who. Yeah, pictures in there. Like that, so yeah. <sighs> Full of shit. So, the plot. Here we go. In Kinsland, in the day of Cersei's and Loras's trial, the High Spell and many of the cities enter and gather the great sceptre of Baron. Loras is brought forward and confesses his homosexual and begs. begs. to unstore by giving his name and titles of the Heron. Out of House Tyrion. Drawn in the fate um, mountain, however, Cersei fears to appear to the trial and the High Spell sends Lancer to retrieve her. Meanwhile, Queen Burn learns, presses into his chambers and watches as his little bird stab person to death. Yeah, that was just what? WTF for that? Yeah, Lancer, Lancer discovers a massive chain of wildfire stored. Underneath the great scepter placed by the Mad King decides the before and is stabbed by the Clipton by one of the little birds inside the sept. Mouser becomes suspicious of, of both Cersei and Tormund's absence and tries to warn the crowd to leave, but then Faith Milton blocks the doors and the wildfire is then lit and completely destroys the great sept and killing everyone inside, including the High Sparrow, Mansa, Lois, Mess, Terrian, Kevin um, Lannister and Lavison and Sector Ablin is captured and imprisoned by Cersei, who Clemo confesses to all her sins, including killing her husband Robert Baffarin on ongoing internal relationship with Jamie. Umbrella and then is given to Sir George to be tortured. Tormen who had been falsely written in his quarters, witnessed the explosion, realised his mother is responsible, commits suicide for himself from the top of the Red Keep. Yeah, that was just shocking as well. When Querburn Qu um, asks his sister what to do with his, um, body, his body, Cersei only replies that his remains are to be buried and ashes spread in the ruins of Great Sept. She's a bitch. Jamie and Bran eventually return from Riverlands and are shocked to see burning ruins of the Great Shep and upon arriving at Red Keep, Jamie witnesses Cersei being crowned the new Queen of the Seven Kingdoms with Crown as her hands. So that was shocking as well. So yeah. Hiya. Yeah. So at the Winterfell. As John and Mel start t talking, Davos enters and confronts her with the burned stake figurine. Mr. attempts to bur burn in Serene alive, but points out that she did it for the Lord of the Light, and Stasius did not object to the sa sacrifice. Davos requests a punishment from John to punish, um, permission from John to punish um, um, Melstar. From her crimes, but the red 
personal encounters that actually can be useful in the in the common war against the dead. John and Stan exiles Emerson from the north with the both Davios and him threaten him to exile her if she ever returns to the north again. As both John Stancia watch most of leave, they discuss which there will lead the United Stark forces with each of them defending to each other. John then tells Sansa that if the Starks are to prevail, they have must each they must trust each other. Sometime later, <coughs> sometime later, Littlefinger private um, and privately meets with Sansa in the God's Wood. He reveals that his ultimate goal is to sit on the iron throne with Sansa with his, at his side. Then he tries to kiss Sansa, but she coldly <laughs> abandons his and leaves. Later, John gathers the various northern lords, the Knights of Valia and the Wildlings to plan for an upcoming invasion by the White Walkers. However, they is this gold as the Northlands and the Knights of Valia are this um queen of the Wildlands, which would would prefer to return their castles to wait out the coming winter. John warns them that this is this winter couldn't be the android. If they do, they stand. They do not stand together to fight the White Walkers. Lauren, Lauren Mountain then speaks out, speaks up, shaming villagers from the North Lords by standing by doing nothing when Jon Snow calling th their aid, realizing that Jon was fulfilling his worth by retaking Winterfell, the North Lords, the Night Vale. And the one is declaring John the new the new king in the law, um, north, while Sansa sits next to him. At she smirks at Littlefinger as his plans fall apart, but then throws with the worry she notices the glare he's given John. Yeah, yeah. Littlefinger was just a little pissed about that. So yeah. So mm -mm 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 -mm. here's. At the twins. Wildfire celebrates the reception of River One with the Lannisters and remakes the two Jamie. The both of them are likely in that they are both men who had betrayed the kings. Jamie Bitter remains wildling uh, and and the phrase are the only ruins of Riverlands thanks to the Lannisters that and then leave. Some days later Wildlin has lunch alone. Wildlin, where his sons Lawful Frey and Blackwood with rivers have gone, his seven reveals to him um, that both men were baked into the med pain he was eating. She then removes her face to reveal herself as Are you stuck? Yes, as Williams, your goddess of Are you stuck? I'm not, I'm not quick, so yeah. Cutting his throat and looking on with stuff for a fraction as he dies. Yes. So, Brendan is dead as well. At Old Town. Sam and Jilly arrive at the Old Town reporting the ascension for Sam's mistraining since the ascension of Ab was unaware of Jim Mountain and the Master's Merrin's death. Sam is Scheduled to explain himself in front of Arch um, Minister. In the meantime, Sam is granted access to the library and an open tower filled with floors upon floors of bookshelves. Mirror the center of the countless white ravens to slide that when it has officially begun. In the dorm! Yeah, in the dorm. Arlene, in the morning of the death of her family, meets with um, Arya and the Sands of Snarks, clearing the, uh, the Sand Snakes, clearing the modern givens against the Lancers and discussing the possible um, possibility of an alliance with Arya, and um, believes with Arthur and Arya a chance of survival. 
or whatever. Um, but uh, we buffs the idea her son and grandchildren are all dead and her house left w without a future, so it's not survival she wants. Area with praises of her own, her heart's desire of vengeance and justice for her and um, house at this very end is greeting them with the fire and blood of the words of House Targaryen. Yes. House Targaryen. Boom! Yeah. Beyond the Wall. As Brennan, Miriam and Benjamin near the wall, Benjamin and takes his leave and staying at the walls magical protection prevents the dead from being able to pass. Mary assists Brennan to reward the tree and re enters the memory of Ned Stark at the Tower of Joy. There he sees young Edward found his sister Lena Stark Lena Stark hemorrhoging from the childbirth with her dying breath. Lena pleads with Edward to take care of her son. Keep Benet his secret safe. Least Robert kill him. It is revealed the baby is the infant Jon Snow, meaning that he is the son of Lena's um, Laria Stark. So, Ned Stark is a pat. Well, a pat. Yeah. So Ned Stark is the father of. Jon Snow, and basically, Lemon Stark is her sis is his sister. So, yeah, okay, I need to put that out. In Maria, Daenerys meets with um, Dario. Infants infirm informs him that he will not be uh, auctioning her um, to Westeros. Rob instead stay behind to the Maria and the rest of. Slavers Bay, now remained of the Bay of Dragons. In her absence, Dario re Lachlan accepts the newest order, protesting while declaring his love for her. The newest in confronts in Tyrion that she is afraid how she left no emotional and breaking off ties with Dario. Despite him and Jeremy loving her, and Tyrion points out with. Darion is not the first man to love her, will not be the last. As thanks for his service to her, Dennis presents to Tyrion a representative badge of Hand of Kin, promising Tyrion to be her Hand of the Queen, a new Hand of the Queen. Had been joined by Varys and ships of Doran and House of Tyrion, Daenerys and her court then Debrun Depart for Westeros with the continent force and a massive invasion fleet with Dragon, Regeron, and Fisheron flying above the horizon and dot over the hundreds of ships. Boom. So, now I'm going to give my verdict. Yes, I'm back. Yeah, I was doing the synopsis. So, yeah. It has been revealed that Jon Snow is the son of Lerian Stark, so um, Ned Stark's sister. And yeah, so Robert can't find out, so yeah. Damn. And yeah, so, um, yeah. I'm pretty confused about that. So. So yeah, um, basically... Winds of Winter was fantastic, brilliant, amazing, really, really freaking good and amazing. So, the verdict of Winds of Winter, I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, guys, because it was really, really good, fantastic and amazing and beautiful as well. So, I would like to thank the directors, the writers... Yeah, the directors and the writer, the excerpt producers, you guys, and the cast and the crew for doing a brilliant season this year. You have done a brilliant season this year. It, I've been shocked throughout the season. Goodbye, Holdor. And yeah, it was just brilliant, fantastic, and 
amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. It was just amazing and fan daddy dozy of a freaking good episode. So, I hope you enjoyed my reviews of Game of Thrones Season 6. Can't wait. I'm so excited for... Wait, we have to have a wait for another year now. So yeah, and basically, so hope you enjoyed my review of 20 minutes of fun of me, not so funny comedian, of my review of Game of Thrones season 6 finale. If you haven't seen it, this will include a head of a lot of spoilers. Hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe for more awesome reviews like this. And see you Wednesday for Dead of Summer and Scream. So I hope you enjoyed this review guys and goodbye. But goodbye, um, Game of Thrones, for another year. Bye!